I know you guys are on a five game win streak and things are going to get even better uh, tomorrow with fans coming back into the arena. Um, you know, do you feel like that's going to help you guys get on a roll even more? And just how exciting is it for you guys to just have fans back in there? Something that hasn't happened since before the pandemic. No, it's been a long time coming, but thank, thankful for the mayor and Ted and our organization to get it all, make it all happen. It's, uh, it's been a long time. Um, we, we miss them. We miss the fans. We miss the, the team ushers. We miss the, everybody, everything about a, a game day. Uh, as play, I give the players a lot of credit. They've been pretty good uh, playing in, no, in front of no fans and still bringing energy and juice. But, and it sounds easy, but it's, pretty, it's not easy as it, as it looks. But having the fans, it's going to be a great day. And obviously, we got one of the hottest players uh, coming into our building. And he's on a he's on a, a stretch that not too many players will ever have or or had. Uh, so it's it should be a great night. But we're going to have to play well to to extend the streak to to six. But we're definitely looking forward to having fans. A uh, real quick follow up: Do you think it'll bring back some you know a sense of normalcy that you guys haven't really had since? since March of last year, since before the bubble and all that? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely trending in the right direction. I never would have thought I would be so excited and playing in front of 10% of a, the capacity uh, in an arena. Uh, that, I mean, any other any other year you would say, man, this is, we, we got the worst uh, setup in the league, but we're so excited, 10%. Uh, that's a start, it's a start to bringing back normalcy, but we, I don't know where this, where this goes is it, is it does it increase would love to have it increase you know game to game but i don't i don't think it will right now but we're happy we're excited and i'm excited for the the 2000 fans that are going to be there they, everybody misses basketball the nba is is popular for a lot of the great reasons it's a family environment you get to see the world's greatest athletes and perform at a, the highest level and we miss it they miss it. Everybody needs their basketball fix. And tomorrow night, we're going to have 2,000 people to be able to get it. Thank you. Yep. Chase. Rui did not practice, Chase. That was going to be my first question. Um, so you got Bradley Beal and Steph Curry going up against each other tomorrow. And they're neck and neck in terms of their scoring averages. but. How would you kind of contrast the differences in their games and, and how they get those points? Well, obviously they're high, they're the highest level scorers in the league and they score, they score in a lot of, a lot of the same ways uh, and they can do a lot of the same things. Curry obviously shoots a lot more threes, um, but they both can score on every part of the floor on either side of the floor and in transition they get points at the rim they get points at the free throw line they're the they're the two best scorers for a reason and but it's i mean i don't i'm sure i don't know i'm not speaking on their their behalf but i know brad now for five years he's focused on you know playing good basketball if brad wasn't i mean brad can you know he can jack up 35 shots any given game but he wants to play good basketball. He cares about his team, and, and if he's focused on winning, we want to keep we want to keep playing good. And it's obviously a, a great little side story to the game, but I'm sure both of them are more focused on you know winning. But definitely, Curry is in a in a streak that you know Brad had a streak like that a while back as well. And I, I believe this was Gafford's first practice, right? Uh, yes. Um, so what was it like finally getting him out there on the practice court? Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, yeah, it was his first practice, but I wouldn't even consider it a practice. It was more of a walkthrough just because of the, the, the games that we played in the past and the games that are coming up. This is, you know, we've got a big stretch of games. And, but we, we had to cover some things that we had to get on the floor uh, with some of the guys that he was playing with just to clean up some things on offense and defense. I thought it was good, but I, I wouldn't say it was a practice. We we ended up doing some three on three with the the low minute guys, and but he didn't participate in that. Fred, hey Scott, um, 
you mentioned Rui didn't practice. Is he is he out for tomorrow? What's his status? Uh, yeah, I would say he's out for tomorrow. Yeah, but he's just feeling better. He's walking around better. Uh, he got treatment all morning. He's getting treatment during during practice, but uh, that's all he can do. You know, body takes. You know, it heals day by day, and uh, we love to have him back, but we're not going to push him back like we wouldn't push anybody back. Uh, but yeah, he's. I'm assuming he's out to for tomorrow. And um, it's it's about a two month sample now of you guys playing defense at at a top ten, top twelve, whatever it is level. What would you say are the biggest factors in that turnaround from the early part of the year? Well, just the I mean, we haven't had the consistency or the continuity that I would like in a normal season, but we've had it's much better now. And some guys. Are, are healthy. Some guys are playing better. Uh, we changed, we tweaked a couple of things defensively to, to better suit some of our personnel. Uh, I think it's a variety of everything. And, you know, the, the health and safety protocol, the COVID, we got hit pretty hard and that kind of messed things up. But I think we're playing, you're right, I think it's from like February first on we're playing pretty good defensive basketball and that's being said you know I think it also helps us is that we get to the free throw line that stops some of the plays so teams have to set up their offense it would be nicer if we can make some of the threes I think it can help our defense even more but I think it definitely helps that we get to the line Ava Scott, um, we've heard a couple of, of different players and um, you mentioned it lately, but where did the, or I guess, when did the focus come on on the one game at a time mindset you guys keep mentioning? Was that conversation you guys had or just something that you really wanted to drill down during this end part of the season here? Well, about 30 games left, I we met because it was, you know, the season was, you could have gone either way. I think it's going in the right direction, but we wanted to, when you play a lot of games and I knew what we were having and our record wasn't as good as we would, would have liked. So you wanted to keep things exciting and keep things fresh. So I, I basically put, we had you know, six five game series. You know, the first two five game series, we were two and three. We had a couple of games that could have gone either way. We could have won those two series. And then, and then we, we are, right now we're in a good stretch in that five game series, but we have three more after this. And we're just trying to keep it because sometimes the NBA, especially this year, it becomes overwhelming. We got a lot of, we got punched a lot of different times and different people. And we just tried, I just tried to keep it, you know, keep that mindset that every game is important. Let's have some fun with this. Let's, let's finish the season out strong. I and mean, we've still got, uh, 17 games to go, so it's still we got a lot, a lot of work to be done, but we're moving in the right direction. And does does your your staff's jobs change at all this time of year? Whether you're looking at different things and game planning, or since just you played most everybody left on the schedule, how, how does that kind of change your day to day if it does at all? No, I think it stays the same. We, I always have an approach. No matter who we play, we we're going to focus on uh, doing our job. I do my job, our assistants do theirs, the players do theirs, the, per, the performance team, the training, the strength and conditioning, everybody has to do their job. You can't just, just because the high level teams in your building, you're going to, you know, your antennas are going to be raised even higher. You got to focus on every game. I know it's hard, you know, when you got a lot of games backed up one another and the road trip that we had and then coming back and playing back to back. I give our players a lot of credit. Those are games that you could have easily said, you know what, I don't have it right tonight. Mentally, I'm exhausted. Physically, I'm tired. But we have that mentality that we, we get paid to play every game. We get paid to do our job every night, and, and we have to be able to do that. But it, it's – we got a lot of games left. I know it's not a, a lot in considering the 72, but we still have 15 games. For some people, that's half of a college season. Neil. Hey, Scott, you alluded to this a little bit with, you know, the defensive adjustments you guys were making. For Davis specifically, you know, earlier in the season, he wasn't hitting shots, but also seemed to be, you know, a little bit of a liability on defense. He talked yesterday about 
you know, shots are whatever. He'll take them when he gets them, but he's trying to hone in on defense. What adjustments have you guys made for him and how have you seen his defense improve this season? Well, he's had a, I mean, he had a, an interesting start because he missed training camp with the, the visa issues. So he was always trying to catch up. And then, you know, over the summer, free agency, you know, you don't put yourself in a position to play five on five and to get hurt when you're about to, to sign a, a, a very good contract. So it's all understandable. Uh, and then, you know, COVID hit, and injuries hit. So he's always was playing catch up. And when you're in this league, it's hard to play catch up. And then he wasn't making shots. Uh, and then defensively, he wasn't where he was last year. But I, I think now he's back to being where he was. And he's helping us on that end of the floor. And, and you know, now he's making shots. So it's it's been a perfect. I think he's more than just a shooter. I've said that last year, and I will say it again now. And, and it's helping us. We're definitely, our defense has, has improved because he's gotten a little bit better as well. How have you seen the spacing maybe improve where, you know, obviously earlier in the season, every team was packing the paint against Russ and Brad. Do you see that, you know, teams are maybe hesitating to do that more, or do you think they're still, for right now, at least packing the paint? Well, I mean, when you have, you know, DB on the floor, it's going to be open. I mean, you you take away DB's threes last night and Brad's threes last night, what were we? Uh, I know, but. You know, it's, I don't want to repeat it because it's not it's not a fun number to say out loud. Um, but when teams when teams know that we don't have DB on the floor, and we, when he was hurt, and Brad was hurt, what do you any any team? You don't even have to be a a, a, a great coach or a good coach. You're gonna pack the paint because no the referees. How many times you see uh, three seconds in the lane? Very rarely is called. So when they don't have, when they were hurt. Russell was seeing a lot of crowd and, you know, it's good to have everybody back because it does definitely open up the floor and we can get to the paint, get to the free throw line. But DB on the floor is a big, is a big advantage for us. I, I think that was the, that was your first official practice with the wizards, right? Uh, how, how did that go for you? I mean, it went good. You know, we, um, Obviously, we didn't do as much as I thought because, you know, we got a whole game tomorrow. So, um, I mean, I understand that. But just going through, like, the script and certain things like that, going through our defensive scheme, it kind of really helped me get more and more familiar with, you know, the things that we're going to be doing throughout the season that I'm here. Um, just getting more and more familiar with, like, offense and defense. Christos? Hello, Daniel. Hope you are doing well. Okay. I would like to ask you, since the trade deadline until now, how good is that fit for you in the team? Uh, for me in this team? Yes. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I fit perfectly. Um, basically, just with any other team I would be with, you know, um, just being in a position to play defense, you know, block shots, certain things like that. And just on the offensive side of it, just being able to be in pick and roll situations to put a lot of heat on the rim to where, uh, you know, I can take attention off maybe like, you know, Russ or maybe Brad, get them a wide open shot to get myself wide open shot. That's basically trying to open up the floor as much as I can with being aggressive coming out of screens or just running the floor in general. And uh, now you have two great teammates, great playmakers like uh, Bradley Bill and Russell Westbrook. How easy you make your game and how could you describe your partnership with them on the court? I mean, you know, it was just, it was automatic as soon as I stepped on the floor, you know, they told me what the things that I had to do to be able to be successful on this team. That's what I went out there and did. And um, when that, when that happened, you know, it was just, it was just automatic. You know, the chemistry was there. Um, Obviously the first game that we played and it was just, you know, uh, (laughs) it was just a good feeling just to be able to come out and just, you know, succeed as quick, as, as quickly as I did on this team. Neil. Hey, Daniel, obviously, you know, a three center rotation is pretty unique. Um, and one of the things that Brad was saying yesterday was that, like, you guys always have a fresh, you know, big on the floor, not necessarily tired and things like that. Is that something that you have been able to feel, you know, compared to Chicago, compared to college, that, you know, you're just kind of more refreshed in the shorter sprints that you're out there? Um, yeah, actually, yeah, having a three center rotation is, is nice. 
because, you know, you got one guy that's going in, he's starting it off and um, really just setting the tone and the pace with, like, the physicality and running the floor and setting screens and stuff. And the guy that comes in right behind him basically sets the tone even more, you know, just picking up just picking up basically off from, like, where the first guy left off and then when the third guy comes in, picking up where the second guy left off. And obviously, uh, you know, Thomas Bryant has not, you know, played while you were here, but he's still around um, and on the bench, very energetic guy, enthusiastic guy. I guess, have, has he given you maybe any tips and anything he's seen to try and help your integration with this team? Um, really, I think he really uh, is in my ear about it, just like motivation, just keeping my head and staying locked in because, I mean, he said, I'm pretty sure, like, he sees it. I'm basically – you know, doing all the things that he does when he's on the floor. So I, um, just making sure that, you know, I do that to a certain point to where um, I'm like at an elite level with it, you know, just giving me pointers and stuff. It's basically, you know, just kind of like repetitive, I would say. So I, I would say he probably sees that, you know, I'm doing like all the things right. And other than that, he's just basically being like a big motivation guy at this point. Because, you know, sometimes I get down, sometimes – you know, I come out of the, I do good, I get a block or anything like that. And he's basically like the hype man over there. You know, we all, every, every team has to have a hype man. You know, if, if it's not one guy, it's everybody. Thanks, Daniel. Chase. Um, hey, Daniel, uh, you've played the Warriors before, but I, I don't think you've played against Steph Curry. Um, so tomorrow, you're going to see him just as a, a big man on the court. Uh, what do you think your responsibility is going to be uh, for the defense when, when, with the way he's been playing? Well, one thing for sure is basically making it as tough as possible for him to finish around the basket, make him play inside the three point line. And if we, if he's playing outside the three point line, if he has a ball screen or anything like that, we have to be up at the level when it comes to bigs. Cause I mean, you know, it's Steph Curry. He'll, he'll shoot that. He'll shoot it from half court if he wanted to. Every possession down the floor. But um, other than that, just being able to have be aggressive coming out of the screens, on defense, and like I said, making it play inside the three point line to where we can try to make him finish over contact. And um, I, I know after you got traded, you guys had that long road trip. But um, just what are your impressions of DC so far? Have you been able to get um, any sense of the city and, and do any exploring? I've been trying to mostly. But other times, I just kind of like sit in the house and try to get as much rest as possible because, like you said, like I had the trip and I've been going ever since. Then I had the injury and I've been rehabbing ever since too. So it's just been it's just been kind of tough, really, just to get out and just do much because I've been doing so much with the team and just doing so much in general, just trying to get back and stay on the floor. Alex. Uh, hey, Daniel, in a, in a normal season, you probably would have played in front of fans by now after getting traded to a team and playing all these games. But tomorrow is going to now in a limited capacity be your first time doing that. Um, just how excited are you to just kind of play in front of a Wizards fan base, even though it's going to be a little bit limited tomorrow? I mean, I'm just excited because, you know, it's not going to be empty. <laughs> Uh, it's not going to be, you know, because it's at some point in time when it comes to the game, it's like quiet, you know, it's the only people that you hear is the people that's on the bench that's beside you. And so just having like people in their accident trying to bring, well, really just bringing energy to the game is like going to be big for everybody. I'm pretty sure everybody's going to be hyped. Everybody's going to be stoked. We're probably going to have other people back in besides like us and the staff. So it's going to be a real big thing for us. You know, we're just going to be able to feed off the energy of the people that are going to be in there tomorrow. Um, and to follow up real quick, you know, your rookie season what was the season that kind of got cut off halfway through. And and I, I guess I'm, I'm sure you've just been waiting for normalcy to return like we all have. Um, but, you know, do you feel like tomorrow is, is going to be a really big step towards that? And, and you know, things start to be, you know, normal again for, for you guys and, and for life and for the NBA? I mean, yeah. I mean, if, you know, I would say I don't, I don't you know, like, I don't mean no harm about it. If people get with the program and just, you know, do the things that we have to do to get back to normal. You know what I mean? Yeah, sooner or later it's going to be back to normal for sure. And I can't wait for it. But so then we just got to take baby steps, you know, take take our time with everything we possibly can do, especially with like, you know, this virus and stuff. Just really just take our time, lock in, and just be able to do the things we can do to eliminate all the stuff that comes with the virus to where we can be back to normal, to living everyday life, mask free and just, you know, stress-free because, yeah, this, this COVID thing is depressing. <laughs> um, and one last quick question for me. I, I I don't know if you know the Wizards and Caps and everybody here are uh, honoring, you know, frontline workers and inviting them into the arena and giving them a priority for tickets. You know, how important do you think it is 
for them to do that? And, you know, how thankful are, are you know, are you, um, you know, for what they've done in this pandemic? I mean, it's really important because the frontline workers, they come in every day, day in, day out, and they work their tails off, you know? It's not just us in the gym every day working hard on the court. They work hard everywhere, everywhere throughout, like, you know, the arenas, the facilities, everything. I mean, it's a real, it's a real big, like, aspect for me. You know, I respect them because, you know, they get up and it's basically like a nine to five every day. You know, they work hard. They make sure the gyms and stuff are clean. They do all, anything basically just, you know, to make the NBA world the best world it possibly can be. And I mean, I appreciate it through and through because I mean, I know it's hard work and I know it's stressful. And I know it can be tough at times, but without them, I don't think, I don't think a lot of arenas will be standing still. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Chase, did you have one more? Yeah, Daniel, I have kind of a random question. Um, I talked to Isaiah Joe and he said that you have like a really impressive collection of uh, classic video games. And I was just wondering if you could uh, elaborate on that. Like, um, do you collect them and, and, and what what are kind of some of your favorite games um i would say i collect them it's just i have like a lot of memories that are you know kind of based off some of the video games that i played back in like you know elementary school and certain things like that and i always want to kind of like tone into some of those you know those memories and certain things like that i don't really, i don't really collect them but it's just like the old games like you know like grand theft auto san andreas and games like that maybe like the old call of duties old mortal Kombat, everything you know, it's just something to kind of like bring the inner child out of me, you know, lets me, you know, just wake up every morning, have something that I can actually just do, you know, just to relax and kind of like separate myself from the world and just be able to play something that I played when I was a kid that actually, you know, gave me energy and made me happy throughout like the, like the situation that I was in when I was younger.